We have new details on the Stanford sex assault case. The outrage over the judge's decision to sentence the attacker to six month in, months in jail. We have obtained some surprising statements from both the attacker, Brock Turner, and his victim. KPI X5 reporter Marie Medina begins our coverage from Stanford tonight. Maria? And Liz, we've learned Brock Turner admitted to making a mistake, but he blamed alcohol. And the victim said, now wait a minute, that's not claiming responsibility, that's making an excuse. And the fact that people are calling his courtroom and threatening him and his family, hoping that he dies badly, I mean, that's just ridiculous. But not everyone agrees. In fact, the backlash against Judge Aaron Persky appears to be intensifying. Stanford students plan to protest Persky's ruling during the university's commencement day this Sunday. Judge Persky did a tremendous job in deriving this sentence. And now we're learning the rape victim in Brock Turner's case said in an interview for the probation report, I want him to be punished, but as a human, I just want him to get better. He doesn't need to be behind bars. But she seemed to have a change of mind after reading the probation report, saying in a statement on Turner's sentencing day, the probation officer's recommendation of a year or less in county jail is an insult to me and all the women. After reading the defendant's report, I am severely disappointed and feel that he has failed to exhibit sincere remorse. We'll never know what the judge was thinking or what influenced him unless we hear from the judge. KPIX legal analyst LaDoris Cordell, a retired judge, believes Judge Persky already made up his mind before hearing the victim's statement. A judge can be influenced by what it is the victim wants, but it, it just kind of rarely happens. In most cases, judges pretty much have made up their minds before they even start to hear the case because they've reviewed the file, they've seen the probation report, and they pretty much know what they're going to do. And there is an effort to recall Judge Persky. Meanwhile, Stanford did release a statement kind of defending themselves. They say they already have policies in place for sexual assaults on campus, but they do plan to expand some programs next year. Live at Stanford, Marie Medina, KPIX 5. Another big question coming out of this case, what more can be done to help victims of rape and sexual assault? KPIX 5 reporter Julie Watts tells us how Congress is now stepping in. We are going to do a special order next week on the House floor. Men and women, members of Congress from around the country, are going to take turns reading the statement by the victim. It's an unprecedented move, a first of its kind in terms of length and content. Congresswoman Jackie Speer is leading the charge on Capitol Hill to support the Stanford rape victim. At over 7,000 words, the statement is so long, members will read it in shifts at a time when they're at their busiest with a short session of Congress leading into the elections. We will be taking one hour of special focused time to do this next week. And while it may seem Congress can't agree on anything, Spears' office says they've been overwhelmed with requests to participate. The opportunity to read the powerful words the victim read in court, including quotes like, you don't know me, but you've been inside me, and that's why we're here today. And in describing how the victim, who'd been unconscious during the attack, learned about the details online, members will read, at the bottom of the article, after I learned about the graphic details of my own sexual assault, the article listed his swimming times. Nearly 12 million people have already read her story, which is trending on BuzzFeed and has quickly become a beacon for victims' rights. But Caitlin Kaufman of Bay Area Women Against Rape says Spears' move will shine that light brighter and farther. I think it will be even more powerful <laughs> to hear it in the house, on the floor. I think that's incredibly powerful. I hope survivors draw strength from that. Now, she's also applauding Spears' pending legislation, the HALT Act, that would, among other things, hold universities accountable for enforcing federal protections for sexual assault victims. Julie Watts, KPIX 5.